Hello, hello. Welcome everyone to Women Filmmakers Go Paperless, which is a scriptation workshop. Thank you to scriptation, to New York City Women Filmmakers, and also to our special guest, Valerie Weiss, who is a television director and is going to share a bit about her journey and about how to use scriptation. We're taking the approach that many of you are new adopters to the software and want a real step-by-step how to use this. The first hour, Val will be just giving us overviews of all the tools and how she uses them. We'll do it webinar style. The second hour of the session, I and Steve and other folks from Ciptation will we will turn into Brady Bunch style so you can really dig in and ask questions and we can go over the tools. So don't worry. If you have questions, you can put them in the chat so I will keep track of them, but we likely will get to those questions at the very end of the seminar. But don't worry, we will get to all the questions. So I am honored to have Valerie Weiss with us today. Uh, Val, just a little bit of your origin story. I know you're a PhD, as am I. Uh, <laughs> so how do you get from PhD to uh, television directing in the like, you know, two to three minute version? Sure. Um, so I just grew up loving theater and drama and acted as a kid and through high school and then college and got a chance to direct uh, theater for the first time at Princeton, but was also majoring in molecular biology and hold on one sec, I don't think my kids know I'm doing the seminar. Hey guys, will you keep it down for one hour? Thank you. <laughs> and this so, is mom life. We are know, director moms is, also. It's real. It's pandemic webinar. Um, so yeah, so I just basically was doing them in parallel tracks and got the chance to direct a play while I was at Princeton and fell in love with it because it used both sides of my brain and then decided to do a PhD at Harvard in biophysics because I still loved science. I just didn't know where exactly I wanted to end up and started a film program. And really that was my film school. I just you know, brought in any film professionals, directors who were coming through Boston and, and uh, got them to speak and Hal Hartley and um, Dylan Kidd and all sorts of great filmmakers. And that was my first film school and then I did finished my PhD, went to the AFI directing workshop for women and and had made the decision that, yeah, I was I was meant to do this and, and here we are. And here we are. So how did you start using scriptation? When did you realize this was the tool for you? Yeah, so I had directed three features before I got into episodic direction directing, and I knew that TV moved so fast. I mean, so does so does uh, indie filmmaking as well. But I just wanted sort of a new way of thinking about like how could I see the movie on the page because I just wanted everything in one place. And I asked a bunch of director friends who'd been working for decades, "What do you guys use?" And nobody really had like. A system like everyone had post-its on paper so it took about a year before i was directing scandal and um, one of the actresses darby sanchfield who was going to direct her first episode after i did my episode she showed me scriptation because she was using it as an actor and we'll talk about that it's great because you can highlight all of your lines with like one click of a button it's incredible um, and so she introduced me to it and it turned out the whole cast was using it and i just was like fell in love with it. I was like, this is what I've been waiting for. Something where I could put pictures in and make my notes. And the best part of scriptation is that when you get a new draft, which you do so often in television, it takes one click of a button to 10 seconds to update the new draft with all those painstaking notes that you had spent you know, a week on before. So um, I was just sold. And then really the reason I just made sure it was a priority in my life is that you're paperless and we all have to do what we can for the environment. So um, I love that aspect of it. And now more than ever with COVID, we're all going back to work. I'm going back to work next week and you know i we have to be careful what we touch and you know now there's no sides or scripts to be handling which is amazing and then there's this added benefit which is what i'll spend my time talking about today the ability to communicate your ideas very quickly to your cast to your crew i've never seen anything like scriptation to be able to do that excellent and at the end of this webinar session, I will talk about the different uses if folks have those questions. Scriptation is used by actors, by directors, by ADs, by line producers. We did a session for the Directors Guild of America, our union, on paperless, and we had folks from all of the directors team 
talking about the way that they use it. So it's a really incredible app for lots of different folks using it in a lot of different ways. So let's uh, dig in. Let's start with, uh, if you could share your screen and, yeah. and show us where you start. You know, you open it up. You're using it on your iPad for us today. I know we can use it on a lot of different devices and that's something that Steve from Scriptation will help talk us through and there's really great tutorials on using it now on your Mac and, and other things. We'll talk about that in the second hour. But I want to uh, start with uh, what you're using it on your iPad and you start with importing your script. So we'll start. Yes. So great. So yeah, today I'm going to use a script from last season of Outer Banks, which is a Netflix show that I got to direct two episodes of seven and eight. And I'm going back next week to do an episode for season two, which I'm really excited about. And so my examples will come from that show. However, for this first, very first part of importing a script, I'm just going to use a sample script. Um, because it's a little easier to show you that. So basically, if I'm in scriptation and I get a text or an email that, oh, the new, the new scripts are out for, the new draft has come out, the first thing I do is I go to my email and I've got this already open. Um, and you open your email with, and it'll come from like synchronize or prodigal usually. You're, it's not directly from the writer, but in there you'll see the PDF and you guys can all see the PDF. So I click on that and we called it revision. So you'd know that that's, that's what we're tracking here. And then you go to the little box, um, the download box in the top right. And for me, what happens is um, scriptation doesn't come up right away for me. I think I have too many apps, but if I just um, swipe left and hit, oh, actually there's scriptation. I used to have to, if it's not there, if you hit more, it should show up as one of the apps. So I'll just do copy to scriptation. And what's great is that it goes, it asks you what folder you want to put in, it into. And if you don't already have an existing folder, then you can, you know, make a new folder. So I'll do that for this purpose. Um, and then I can enter the name. So I'll call this OBX uh, revisions right now. And I'll hit save. And it should be in there. Or I think I have to reselect it to make sure. And then now it's moved that into there. Okay, so if you guys have any trouble with this stuff, I'm going to move a little bit fast because there's so much to cover and I want you to see the power of this. And, uh, but there are videos on how to do each of these little things, discrete videos, and also in the webinar that I did with um, Michael Spiller and Pete Chapman, you can see all of this revisited. So if it's a little fast, don't worry, you can, you can go back over it. So anyway, I'm going to close that now because I'm not going to use that uh, for today, but that was importing a script. So Rachel, where do you want me to go next? What do you want me if to If you could about? just give us an overview of the interface, just show us the tools and kind of say what it, what it does to give us a lay of the land and then we'll dig into your process of uh, annotating and marking the script. Yeah, definitely. So today I'll show you guys transferring um, script, but other than that, these, just look at these uh, on this uh, sort of menu page. I'm gonna talk about inserting facing pages. It's a pro function, but it's, I don't know how you function without it. So I'm going to talk to you about that because for me, it's one of the most powerful parts of it because I bring in, like I said, I want to watch my movie as I read my script. So I use it to bring in photos, floor plans, um, overheads from shot designer. I'll, I'll show you guys how I write a shot list, but this could also be, you know, actors writing the beats of a, of a scene that they want to track. Um, I'll show you a cool little function of adding audio where you can add a song or a pronunciation for something. And I'll also show you one of my favorite things is how to bookmark my script for this to use as sides for the day. So that's just an overview of what I'll talk about in addition probably to other things today. So just moving forward to a script page. Um, this is a great page to show you the example of how powerful all the annotation functions are. So at the top of, your, of my screen, you'll see a menu bar that says annotate. So if I, I can toggle on and off my menu bar. For you, it probably showed up on the left, so I'll move it to the left. What's cool is by pressing those two lines at the bottom and dragging it, you can put it to the left, you can put it at the top of your screen, wherever you like to work, because you'll see if it's all the way to the left, it covers, it covers some things. So I'm fine with that for today. So on this annotation bar, you'll see I can highlight things. So 
you know, I just wanted that tarmac to really stick out, so I highlighted that. Or maybe I want to underline something, the Twinkie, which is a, a van that these guys drive in all the time. So maybe I want that to be, you know, more prominent. So I just underlined that. Or maybe there's a line, you know, um, maybe John B's not going to say come on in the scene. So I can go and cross that out because we maybe decided that last minute. So I can cross that out and know that I don't need to get that line. Um, one of my things I use constantly is putting text in here. So you just highlight the text button and then you just tap on the screen where you want it and you're like, get, uh, get different versions. Maybe I want that note to be clear to me. And you can also change what color your text box is, text box is. so I can tap on that. And you'll see when I do that, an inspector button pops up. I click on that. And maybe I want it to be, um, you know, a different color, okay? Because that was, that was, you know, maybe I make those kinds of notes in a different color. So I can just change to these preset colors. Or, and you can also customize what your notes look like. So you can change your text color and your fill color, change the size of it. You can change the font. You know, it's, it's amazing. It's kind of endless what you can do. <laughs> and that's all through Inspector. When you click it's all it through Inspector. and click Inspector and it brings up this whole menu bar. Yeah, so if you guys are like Mac users and use Pages or Keynote, it's all the same kind of formatting. Inspector is where you, you uh, can, can change those variables. Um, something I love, I love to be able to make private notes too. A, because it makes my script uh, less cluttered. I mean, this is... This is pretty cluttered as you can see, but it's kind of organized. But if I added too many more things, it would be very hard to know what's going on. But so A, to keep it contained, but also I want, want private notes, right? So, you know, if I wanna write something that I don't want everyone to see, whether it's a note for myself or, you know, just something that's a little bit of sensitive information, but I need to remember to make sure I'm watching out for that, I can make that private. But what's cool about this is I can also make these little private notes um, coded in a, with a system that means something for me. So when I'm, and this is, you know, going to make more sense to directors than anyone else who's watching, you know, you do a tone meeting with a showrunner and the showrunner is the writer of the, the, the big boss writer of the episode. And so they have such little time. They're so busy, just like you are. So I want to make sure I know what my questions are and very clearly and they pop out. So I always make them with a little question mark in a blue circle. So as I'm doing a page turn with a showrunner, I see that note and I know I need to ask it in that moment. That's my shot. So, but you can do that with costumes. You can do that. You can color code things any way you want. And the way you do that is, you know, you open up the, I'll start from scratch. I'll add a new one actually. So I'm going to make a note. I just pop it there. So maybe I use a star for my actors, right? So it's a note about the actor. I'll say whisper this, okay? And so maybe after I write the note, I can then tap on the note. Oh, I hit done. And then see the little paintbrush on the bottom right? I click on that and I can make it a different color. I can change it to a different symbol, okay? I'll make it orange. And so there's that note right there. And that takes us to the next thing I want to show you is the pen. And I'll circle that so you guys can see it. I use this pen probably more than anything because A, just some notes are easier to write or arrows are easier to make or circling things. Or as I'm watching it, and this, this pen's a little thick, right? So let me just take my opacity down so it's not so, doesn't take up so much space. But I might like check things off as I'm watching a take. I got that. I didn't get that. I'm done with this. Or one of my favorite things to do is say, is do a big X, I finished the scene, done. Um, you know, or you can write words obviously, like best take, best take, or whatever is first. Okay, it's just way faster than typing it. So that's, that's self-explanatory how amazing that is. Ah, did I just... Rachel, do you still have me? I see that my internet. You're good. I have unstable. you. You just okay. Yeah. You, just a I little bit. Have you and we we see your screen. You're good. Great. So gonna, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say you something that was very helpful for me on that last webinar you did was your color coded system. Can you just mm -hmm. tell us how you're using one color for these kind of notes? What's for you know for camera for yeah, actor sure. performance? 
Yeah, so for instance, um, I think it's very important to come up with those systems because the beauty of scriptation is how much time it saves you. And so what's great is you can do anything you want with it. You can make your own systems. It's not gonna lock you into something. But if you make decisions ahead as a director or actor or crew member of what, how you color code, then you start, your brain just like processes that data really quickly. So you can just find what you need faster. So for instance, my tone notes were a good example of, you know, that system is really helps me. Or in this case, you'll see all my text, all my text that um, is in red are VFX notes. Okay. And I don't make them private because I don't want to forget them because when I'm shooting, I want that to pop at me. Or for instance, um, this sequence that you're looking at, and I've made it so messy, I'm just going to erase. You can just hit the undo button and get rid of a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm going to make this pretty again. Okay, so um, these cool text boxes, you make them by going to, um, uh, where are they? They are, yeah, under the line, you can see you can make arrows, lines, ellipses, rectangles. So you can go to, these were made with rectangles. So I will make a transparent rectangle in a certain color. So this tells me in the scene, because I was popping back and forth between different locations on the same day and everything green is one location on this airstrip everything that's lavender is in the is in a different location in this so it's a way to mark very quickly what you have you could do that for day and night and so the way you do that i'll erase this one um, so you just click on something you've done before and hit trash to get rid of it but then if i want to make another square you see i've already got my rectangle selected, then I can just draw it. Okay, and I can tap it and move it around. So that's just part of my color coding too. any way I can just make my script start to be a living document. And so I don't have to read to understand what I'm looking at is so helpful because of how fast we need to move and how quickly we need to be able to make decisions and answer questions. Is that yeah, that's great. Do you want to show us uh, facing pages and then adding photos and yeah. audio in your floor plans and we'll move into those pieces? Absolutely. Um, so before I even do that, I'll actually say one of the great things about how paperless you can go. And I would hope, you know, maybe you guys in return for my doing this can make me this promise that you will never ask for another piece of paper when you are working. I literally say to the AD and production office, don't ever print anything for me. Send me PDFs of everything, every schedule, every uh, location scout, where we're heading, all my scripts, obviously. Just send PDFs. And the great thing is you can import those PDFs the same way I, I imported the script. And then what's great is I can keep them um, right in my scriptation file. So I have my storyboards right next to my script. So I'm not sitting there flipping through a binder trying to find something. It's right there. I also have like my shot list can be in there. I have my schedules, my day out of days, all of that right there. So I can pop back and forth. And I have lots of other helpful documents that I use and I keep them all in scriptation. So please don't print anything ever again. <laughs> okay, that's my little environmental soapbox. So back to your question about facing pages. So take a look at this page. So what I did is I'll show you in a second how you create a blank page. You can create as many blank pages as you want all over your script. This is another great thing that is a reason to go digital because um, otherwise you're trying to find paper, put them in your binder, they rip, they fall out. But here you can just create pages wherever you want and without cluttering your script. Because as you see, just making your notes on your page will make it very busy. So I put my images elsewhere. So here, what I've done is I've brought in um, a, a, an important storyboard shot to show everybody kind of what we're talking about. Um, and then this other, this other image that you see, I made in Shot Designer, but you can do this by hand. What's great is you really don't even need to use other programs, but I wanted to show that because I know people use it. But I can draw, I can make my little people, I go into my circles, I can make them different colors, and I could put my little actors on this floor plan that I've inserted ahead of time. And I can show you, oops, I want to show you the arrow, not the line. I can show you which way they're walking, right? 
or actually you probably have purple go to purple, right? And green goes over here. And then you can start drawing in where your camera is and what it's seeing. And anyway, it's amazing because you can just do all of this in scriptation. You don't actually have to go out to another program. So, and here's some, you know, location photos and shots, reference photos. This is that Twinkie that I was talking about. This is an airplane from my episode eight sequence. So all that stuff can live right in your script for easy access to show everybody whatever you're doing. Um, oh, sorry, I see a poll. The poll's popping up. I'm just gonna stop yeah. sharing the poll. I'm just clicking out a bit. I... <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway, that's, that's the kind of thing I use my facing pages for. So now I'll show you guys how to add those. Sound good? That would be great. Okay, so I'll go back to my script page. So let's say, you know, it actually doesn't matter where you are in the script, but I'm going to want to put it here. So tap on your script um, somewhere where it's, you don't have something else. I have something all over this page. <laughs> and then in the top right corner, you'll see four boxes. Tap that. And then you'll go to this view of your script, which is pretty helpful because it's actually a view of your entire script. And you guys can see just how much I use scriptation. I mean, everything just goes into this document. I don't know what I would do without it. So um, to add a page, you go to edit, which is at the top. And then you have a couple choices here. You could add facing pages. Okay, so I see a question, how'd you get that view? The top right, there's four boxes in a square. Tap that and you'll get here. Okay, I know that was a little fast. Again, I go through this on my, somebody goes through this on the webinar. Uh, so there's videos you guys can watch to catch up. So if you hit facing page, you're gonna put a blank page before every page of your script, which may seem genius because you don't have to do this, but I find that uh, cumbersome because when I wanna uh, swipe through my script quickly, I don't want to have to go through a page, an empty page every time. So I just add my pages individually, but you know maybe somebody else wants to do it that way. So I hit add, and then what's great is you can add a background, like maybe you want graph paper because you're, you know, you have a really technical position and you're drawing something to scale, like maybe a production designers want that and they're going to draw the floor plan in right there. Um, maybe, and so I'm going to make a background color just so you guys can see it when I add it. So I'll just make it red so it shows up and you can add one page, two pages, as many pages as you want, depending, you know, it just saves you a step if you add multiple at a time. I'll add one and there's my red page, okay? Now, I now have to drag it to where I want it. Um, so this is how you do that. Tap it once and your check mark shows up. And then you just kind of pull it to where you're gonna be. And hopefully I'll find that spot. I don't know that I will. It's, it's, uh, it doesn't really matter. I'll just pop it right here. Okay, so now I've inserted it there. Very important, when you're done, hit save. Okay, and this is a really big, this is a double script. That's my other tip, is if you're doing a block of episodes, more than one, please ask your um, script coordinator to collate both scripts into one document, and they'll always have to send them to you that way, but it's a lot easier to work with one document than two, that's, that's my tip. Um, so then um, you can go back and find that page directly. You can either, there's two ways to do that. You can either just tap on it and it takes you right back to it in the script, or you can tap that box of four squares again and it pops you back out. Okay, so that's how you add a facing page. And obviously you can add a white page, but I wanted you to track what I was doing, so I made it red. Okay, so now I wanna go back and show you how to add things to that facing page, because that's really the power of this. Okay, so this page, let's, um, let's use this, actually, I'll just recreate this. Okay, so I'm going to take this away, okay, and I'm going to just make this small in case for some reason I have trouble getting it back, okay, and I will, I can select all of these things, although I'm new to selecting, maybe I can't easily. Yeah, here we go. So I'm going to select all of this and get rid of it. Okay, cool. So this is, pay close attention to this because this is one of the most powerful things about it. So on the annotation bar, you'll see a picture of a picture. Tap that 
You have a choice between camera and photo library. Camera just means you take the photo right now with your iPad and it would land in your script in that spot. I don't find that useful very often. So most often I'll go to my photo library and then I will find the folder where I'm keeping, um, I'm keeping my documents. So I made ahead of time an OBX scriptation folder just using albums on photos on my iPad. And then, um, you know, and so I suggest organizing everything before you add your photo. And let's see, so here's that photo that I mentioned that I had in here before. So I bring it in and then I can make it bigger, right? And so then let's just bring in something else we can play around with. Um, I'd love to bring a floor plan. Well, I can bring this in. So you could also bring in floor plans. And what's really cool is if your production designer sends you a PDF of your floor plans because you've said no paper, no paper, no paper, and they're the best, they're usually very excited that you want no paper, you'll bring your PDF in and then you can just blow up your floor plan for the set that you want, take a screen capture of it and it ends up in your photos. So I don't know if I have an example of that that I can show you easily, but once you do that, you can bring that in. I make it as big as possible so that I can start writing on it. So for instance, this is just an overhead I made, but if this were, a, it's sort of a floor plan because you see my hanger and my airplane, but you could have, you know, your actor and let's add some colors, you know, they're coming in this way and this way, and you, you just start marking it up like you would on any overhead and it's amazing. The other thing I like to do is I like to write my shot lists right into here. You can also bring them in the same way, but I like to just save time and write, you know, drone shot, blah, 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 blah. And then just write them in there. So then it's editable. So if it, I want to change something, I can change it right here. I'm not having to go back to my iPad or my laptop, type up another shot list, bring it in and change it. I want, because this is such a living dynamic document. Um, now, there's a couple questions that are coming in about what you're able to import. So does everything yeah. come into your photo library? Like if there's a PDF, like it says, can you drop in PDFs like you do in Keynote? Are you importing from files or folders or only from the Photos app? Or what are the ways sure. to import? Great question. So from what I've experienced, and uh, you know, Steve could chime in later when you guys do your Q&A, um, PDFs and then photo files. And for me, photo files have always been JPEGs. I don't know if you can bring PNGs or whatnot, but basically the two things I've only, I've ever been able to bring in are those. So PDFs will end up right in your, in your program, right? So these are all PDFs. Okay, so they'll end up as documents in there. Now, if you wanna do what I said, like bring in photos, they, I think, have to exist in your photo library. So they need to, so I put them in ahead of time, either by like sending them from Artemis or, you know, my iPhone and air dropping them into my folder ahead of time or screen capturing something on my iPad. So for instance, I'll show you, like, let's say, uh, let's say, okay, here's a floor plan. Great. So let's say I want this floor plan. Let's say this is a PDF I'm looking at. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this. Okay. I'm going to tap on that and I'm gonna crop out what I don't want, or maybe I want just part of the set. Let's do that. I want part of the set because I don't need the rest of it. I'm just using one room, but yet it's a sound stage and it's got every room. Um, I hit done and then save to photos. Now that's not gonna be filed. So if I wanna go get that, I'm going to have to, I'll go to my photo library and now you're gonna see part of my private life. Um, oh no, you're not. So then I just bring, there it is. Okay, it's the most recent photo that I have. Let me do that again. Okay, hit done, and there it is, okay? And so the reason I make it, I tend to make it as big as possible because I wanna draw on them, right? And whatnot, but if I make this bigger, that uh, circle doesn't move with it. It's not attached, so I basically, 
make it as big as I need it to be, intending never to make it bigger and smaller, which is why I use it on a facing page. So that's a little tip um, that's not intuitive. You also use audio sometimes. Can you show us how that function works? Yeah, totally. And so I have, you I have some more. When would, you when would I use it? Okay, so I would use it a uh, couple ways that I might use it. I use it a lot for music. So for instance, when I directed Suits, there was this great scene between Harvey and Donna, which was the couple we were all re rooting for to get together for nine seasons. And season seven or eight when I did it, there was a moment where she gives him a key back and it's like, I was gonna do something just very visual and emotional with it. And so I picked a song ahead of time and got it cleared with a music supervisor. So I, I knew it could end up in the cut and hoped it would and it did, which was great. So I put that song into my script so I could play it for the actors on set and say, hey, this is kind of the vibe I'm thinking. And then they both kind of like, took a moment, they listened to it separately, and, and they loved it. They loved that it just informed everything about the scene for them. And so um, I use that with a song. You could use it, I was talking to the NBC program yesterday and you know, using my Chicago Med exam, uh, episodes as examples, you can use it for pronunciation. Like if you're doing a medical show or a show with a lot of jargon ahead of time, especially for actors, you can find out how it's really pronounced and have that, um, have that there or foreign language or whatnot, um, you can record it so that when you're on set, because my hope is you're not using paper on your phone or your iPad where you're, that you're using for sides, you can just play it back and hear it again. So um, I'll show you how I do that. So I have a couple things in here. Oh, so you guys can't, you hear that? I don't know if you can hear it because yeah. I don't see you guys. Okay, cool. So that's, um, you know, that's a song that I put in, for instance. So let me show you how you guys do it. Um, so hidden behind the camera function, if you hold down on that, you see image and sound come up. You choose sound and you just tap where you want it on your script, okay? So I will put it as close to the line that is referencing. And then you see, uh, at the bottom of my screen, I think you can see the red record button and a stop button. So I'll hit record and say testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, or play the song or whatever I want there to be. Hit stop and then I can play it back. So I'll hit record and say testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, or play the song or whatever I want there to be. Great. So could you guys hear that? Yep, that was excellent. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, can you show us using layers? Um, yeah. Oh, I can. I'm new to layers, and okay. I'm work, working some stuff. No, I can. I can. I can show you. I'm still working some stuff out with Steve and how you share them. So layers are great, and I have this grand vision on this episode I'm about to do of having a, a layer for my production designer, a layer for my DP, a layer for costumes, a layer for each actor potentially, so they don't have to see all my notes for everybody else and then I can just send them a layer or they can send me back a layer. The challenge I'm learning is that you can't put facing pages into those. So while this might be great for actors or it's going to be less useful for DP and production designer where I want to show them stuff. So I'll probably just share my whole script with those guys. But if let's say I want to share this with the actors. So layers, you go at the top, there's um, a little button that says layers, and then you can add a layer, the top, top right, new layer. Great, and I'll call it uh, John B. So notes I want to share with John B. Um, he gets his own layer. So I'll click that and it'll make me a layer that doesn't have any notes on it because it's brand new, which is great because he doesn't need to see everything I'm talking to everybody else about, right? And so I'll make a note, um, utter desperation, right? Because this is how I see it. Or, you know, I like with actors, I, and we are talking about this, uh, for this season, um, just, I like to have uh, sort of quantitate where you are emotionally in a script, like talk about your arc. So I might like assign numbers, you know, to where you are in your journey 
to show you what scale you are because you're shooting out of sequence and whatnot. So anyway, this is super helpful. And then I believe you can just share this layer. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah. I think with these three dots, I can then hit share. And then choose e email or however probably text it to him. I don't know if I can because I haven't done this very often. Hit mail, send it to him, and he can just bring that layer into his script. And it's great. The other way it's useful is, again, maybe you're in a costume meeting and you have a bunch of notes for them that you don't want to see everything else. So you write all your costume notes in one place. And as you flip through that script, you're only seeing your costume notes or only writing costume notes. And then I believe you can just merge everything. If you go to the top, you can merge all your layers together and see all the notes that you've created, which seems so powerful. I just, I haven't used it a lot. It seems like a great time to use it during COVID, um, but I've found all the other functionality to be what I need without using it. Yeah, I've never used it, so I'm excited to try it when I go back out in November. Um, yeah, really, really great. There is a question about um, audio and music. Can you bring in an MP3 or other sound file? Um, I don't think so. Or only record? I think so you can you, only when record. You, have a song, you buy it and just record it onto the iPad? Did you say, do I buy it and then record it? Is that so, what no, if you, if you have a song that you yeah. want to be able to play, are you playing okay. it on your phone and recording it into scriptation? Yeah, I'll just play it on, my, exactly. That's exactly what I'll do. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about bookmarks and prepping oh, yes. your day for That was, was, was a game changer when I learned that from you on the last webinar. So if you could yes. show us that. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, for directors, this it's great for everyone. I'll talk about everyone separately, but for directors, it's amazing because I used to have two binders. I'd have the binder with my whole script and all my notes and documents in it. And then I'd have a little skinny binder with tabs, with dividers, and I'd put the five to seven to 10 scenes I'd be doing in order each day. So I'd go home after a 12, 14 hour day exhausted have to take out all my scenes, put them back in the right place in my binder, pull out the next one, put it in order. I mean, it was like such busy work that took like 30 minutes. It's just a pain in the butt. Anyway, um, now what I do is, you know, when I'm on my last shot of the day and everyone's setting up and I have a breath to myself, I will just go through my bookmarks and delete what I did that day and set up for the next day. So I'll show you how I do it. So I kind of did this in advance for this, uh, for this seminar, but you can create a bookmark. Um, I'll go to this page, yeah, find, let me find a page that doesn't have a bookmark. So did I just, yeah, okay. So this page does not have a bookmark. So I will just hit bookmark and then it just added it. It added it to the top so I can edit. So can you show us which button you're pressing? Which is yeah. the bookmark at the top? So there's a little, it looks like a bookmark. I think it's the standard bookmarky thing. Hold on, I'll, I'll point, I can't. It's right up there. You guys see that at the top? It, it's, you know what, it's, I'll toggle it. It's off and now it's on. Got it? Off, on. Okay, so I bookmarked it that way. And then next to it, there's a picture of an open book, okay? When I click that, I have all the bookmarks. I already put in bookmarks. If you didn't, it would be blank except the top thing that says bookmark. And then I will rename it scene 40, 45. Or you can put a description. Um, Hope, I don't know. Hope goes home. Okay. Um, so in there, I have all my scenes for the day, but then I can reorder them, which is the game changer. Um, so in order to reorder them, you hit edit, and these little three lines enable you to move things around. So I can move scene two to the bottom because you're shooting out of order. I hope this is clear. They're not, you know, it's if they're not labeled scenes. Show us the numbers, edit but... button again. So you go, you're on the page you want to bookmark. Then you mm -hmm. hit the little flag bookmark icon mm -hmm. to bookmark that page. Then you open the book icon and then mm -hmm. you can rename the scene. And, and how edit. do you edit? See you at the bottom? The edit 
Yeah, take a look. Can you guys see at the bottom? It says edit on the bottom right. Very bottom right corner. Perfect. Yeah. And that's where you rename it. You can get rid of it. So for instance, that hope, I'm just going to get rid of that. It's not part of our presentation. So you're just and, clicking and sliding to get mm -hmm. rid of it. Yeah. Well, there's a, like the do not enter sign. You hit that and it's gone, right? So I can get rid of that and hit delete. You guys see that? That's great. And so you do that for each day. When you're prepping for the next day, you will prepare your uh, bookmarks so that you know what's happening. Absolutely. Are you also There's using it for sides or, or? So this becomes my sides. So someone asked, there is a sides function and I can talk about that. I don't use it. It's for me, it's not optimal because this does the same thing. I don't ever want to see a scene out of context with the rest of my script because I want to know what scene came before and what scene came after. And so for me, just having pages that are arbitrarily cut off is just not how I see my movie. It's all, for me, it's, this is all about watching my movie all the time. And so I don't want to not be able to go back or have to get back into the script and find that page or ask my script supervisor, what was the scene before that? That's just, to me, that's, that's like a artificial truncation in your brain. So this does all of that. You just make your sides, here by bookmarking the scene and then they're in shooting order. So I don't even use, right? Cause I'll show you, then you can just go, you know, start here. So maybe that's the first scene of the day, right? Hold on, let's move this up to the top, right? To start here, okay? Except it would be a scene. Um, and then you're just, you're in your scene and then you can just very quickly go to the next scene that you're gonna shoot. Oh, we're gonna shoot uh this next right and while we're here this is an example of what my script looks like after i finish shooting so i will like check off everything i've used i'll make a note for my editor in a certain color coded box um anything that you know i've made a note here that i did something practically we didn't use uh vfx so that my editor is not looking for that shot and you know just basically scribble all over so that i remember a week or two later when i'm editing or my editor knows what we actually shot or didn't shoot super helpful and your head and you're sharing with your editor how how are oh, you okay yeah so well if my editor uses scriptation um then i could just send my whole script if i want to be totally transparent and have them see tone notes and all my decision making which I think is a great idea if you're really partners and collaborators, but you know, you may want either more privacy or you may not, that may not be useful to them. So typically what I've been doing is just taking a screenshot. So do you guys know how to, so you just push the home button and the top button, take a screenshot and then I tap on it and then I can just email whoever, you know, email or text to them. So it's so fast and then at the, uh, at the end of the day, it takes me five seconds to go back, click, 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 send it to him or her, they have it. And then when they're doing their cut, they already know what I like and what my choices are. So we inevitably save time by the time we get to my director's cut. I'm not spending half a day explaining, no, 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 I love that shot. Why didn't you use that shot? You know, they know exactly what, what, what I'd like to do. But you can uh, send your whole uh, yeah. script, all of your notes. So right now I'm mentoring the Stowe Story Lab and I'm doing individual meetings with writers. So I'm making notes on all their scripts and then I'm emailing it to them and they have every note, every time I see something in the script, any corrections, any kind of character mm -hmm. beats. So how can you uh, export the whole thing and send it to someone? Yeah, so you just um, tap on your script and you go up to uh, this icon at the top that looks like you're sharing. And see it says share and then you have choices you can keep your annotations if you want to be totally transparent and have them be able to open everything you can hit flatten annotations if you don't want them to be able to change it and maybe you guys can talk to steve in the post the post uh, party that you guys are going to do i don't know if it's flattened if they can open your private notes or not but that would be great to know you can hit ignore annotations if you just want to send the blank script to somebody because someone might be like, oh, I don't have the script, but you don't want to send them what you have. Um, or I haven't used this, but an annotation summary that tells, tells everybody, you know, what annotations you made. 
probably the less useful. Um, and then you hit share and it gives you choices to email or uh, maybe there's Dropbox and different things too. I don't know. I usually just email it um, or text it. Excellent. That's, that's really helpful. Um, couple other things. Can you show us, you mentioned highlighting the actor's dialogue and, and uh, color coding things so you can see really easily you know, the way the actors are using scriptation. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so great. So with actors, you guys are in luck. You just hit actor, right? And then whichever character you are, you know, we'll do John B because we'll easily be able to find his lines. Um, and now it's done highlighting all of John B's lines. So you can see up here, right here, it is highlighted John B's lines. And so um, these pages, there we go. That's been highlighted. So instantly, like if you're going to a table read and you're so busy, it's like during your lunch while you're doing an episode and you you've barely read it once, let alone sat and had time to highlight everything. You no longer have to sit there like highlighting at the beginning while you're trying to eat your lunch, getting ready to do a table read. You just hit that button and it's all highlighted. Similarly for directors, if you wanna see how often one of the characters is in the episode, you can do that and then just very quickly visually scan the script to see how present or not they are in your episode. So exactly. Super if you click that, that top right button with the where you see all the pages, you can quickly scan and say, oh, this person, like they really have a lot of work. Yeah, exactly. Like if this weren't full of my other notes, you would very quickly, if it were empty, here, let's go to a layer. Let's go to the right, Johnny layer, that shall we? I did that writer yesterday who I was unsure who the main character was in her script. And so I opened it up and I made one character yellow and one character blue. And I said, well, look, who has more dialogue? Like who's really driving the story? And it was incredibly ah, smart uh, to look at, you know, who has the most in the scenes. Okay, so we can do that. Okay, one second. So I just went back to his layer, which has nothing else on it, highlighted all his things and then yeah there you go you can see how present he is in this block of episodes so great tip see i just learned something from you rachel that's the other thing i would say is like make you know little pods to learn together and share ideas because you know i learned stuff from spiller and pete when we did our webinar and they did for me too. And so we'll all just be better at our jobs, which makes us faster and safer. So that's, you know, the big picture of why this is so, and we'll make better work. It's just more time and for that's, creativity. I mean, that's really why I'm here. So uh, I offer random Saturday sessions with women directors during the pandemic to get us up and ready to work fast and safely and better. And so there's, that's what brought us to this session even and how we are yeah. united. So it's great. Really, it's, really all, great. it's all making it a better, better place to work and better art to make the world a better place. Absolutely. Yeah. So one of the biggest features that brought me to scriptation was the ability to bring in new drafts of the script because mm -hmm. in TV I'm shooting, it's my last, day, my last scene and there's new pages and I'm like, wait, what? Okay, let me read the scene. <laughs> Yeah, so why don't I show you, I'll show you guys transfer and then if you want me to answer questions for a few moments, that makes a lot of sense. So, okay, so let's transfer. I'm going to go into my, um, let me find my uh, folder that I'm doing this in, OBX, OBX1, is that where I am? Yeah, I don't think I made a special scriptation one. So, okay, so basically, let's assume I already brought in the, um, Let's see, assume I'd already brought in the, the new draft ahead of time and I would do it the same way you guys did. So I'd open that up because I think the latest one that's open, hold on a second guys. I just wanna make sure I don't erase something that I've been working on because um, I don't wanna lose it, but visions, nope. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Steve, if you can, or someone from Scriptation, if you could drop in the tutorial on this function, because 
this is a big one. And, and I remember when I was a brand new adopter and I'm still a beginner at scriptation. That's partly why I want to really dig in and work with folks who are experts. Um, I was really a nervous, like what if things get lost? What if it disappears? Yeah. I just was really nervous about it, but I haven't had any problems. But if, if someone from scriptation could drop the link to the tutorial on this importing and then, yeah. um, updating your draft, because I think that's one of the things that, that, uh, newer users like me get nervous about is like, we're going to lose our old notes or where do things go? Yeah, definitely. So, um, okay. So just to show you guys how that works, it's best to be on the draft. So the draft that's open in scriptation, be on that and go to transfer and then choose what you want to transfer from. So I'm just going to, I'm actually not going to do it just in case I've picked the wrong scripts. I'm going to say transfer from combo into scriptation and click scriptation compare at that moment. And then it's really important to take a deep breath here and not be rushed and make sure you're going from the right, your, your draft you had been working on to the newest draft. And then you hit begin. I'm not going to do it just in case I didn't pick the right ones for right now. And literally it's just like when I transferred, when I was doing anything else that, you know, the counter was going 98, 87, da, 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 and it just goes through it really fast. And then all your notes are there. It's amazing. And if you transfer the wrong way by accident, this is in the chat. Yeah, talk about okay. this. Your notes still exist. They're in a layer. That was what's comforting to me, but I still get anxiety. I still worry. Okay. Like something <sighs> might disappear. And like, you know, you're on little sleep when you're shooting TV and you're working really hard and you don't want anything to get lost. So exactly. The last like my first couple of times I'd have my paper script and my post-it notes and scriptation. And I was trying to figure out because I was just afraid to let go. But once I let go of the side of the pool and just trusted scriptation, it's been, it's been really incredible. So yes, um, Mel, you can undo if you make a mistake. Uh, from the last webinar and some of the feedback, I'm putting more valuable features from Valerie that are essential for script supervisors. Aww. So thank you. Oh, good, yeah. good. She has a maybe four or five minutes left with us. So if anyone has um, a question, now's a great time. You can put it into Q&A or chat. And then we'll stay on the last hour and do more specific questions. Steve will help because, again, I am not uh, the expert. But if there's someone who has a question specifically for Val, uh, someone Sarah has, has her hand. Hey, Sarah, can you put it in the chat and we will... Um, get to your question. Val, can you talk about the tools you're using? So you have an iPad, a pencil. I know you yeah. have waterproof things. And if you could show us a little of that while folks put their questions in. Sure. Yeah. So, okay. so, and again, it's also personal, but I'll tell you how I work. I like my iPad to be as light as possible. I'm going to be carrying it around all day long. I don't want a heavy thing. I know some people like a big grip or a, they, they use like a tough case to protect their iPad. For me, if I'm on a sound stage or if I'm not doing anything that's going to threaten the integrity of my iPad, I just use, you know, an Apple very light leather case um, that's super easy. My pencil, I recommend getting more than one. I've lost them on location scouts, not that many, and you can always use your finger, but I bought this, um, this uh, little metallic, a magnetic thing that then attaches to the back of that but always mindful that that can fall off and I can lose it. So I'm like pretty anal about always holding on to it too. Um, so that's super helpful. And then I do a lot of stuff in rain and in water and on boats and in pools. And so I bought this um, amazing uh, waterproof case by a company called Nude, N-U-U-D. And I think it's called Life Proof. I, I have it for the 10.5 iMac iPad. They don't use, they don't make them anymore, that iPad size. So I don't know. Uh, my iPad's about three years old, so I don't know what you can get now. Maybe someone else does in the chat. But that thing is amazing. Like I've been in torrential rain for four days straight and my iPad's been fine. I've been on boats, like water spraying everywhere, fine. So that's great. I also have, because now that you're digital, you need to just think differently about your electronics, right? So I bought this um, totally waterproof bag from Patagonia. Um, you always need a big charger brick because you're going to be using 
so much more power because you're on your iPad the whole day. And if you're on a soundstage, you can plug into Village, but you know, if you're on location and moving, 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 um, so just make sure you have them and that you charge them every single night. And um, yeah, I think that's the extent of, you know, the tools I like to have. Do you deal with screen glare? Do you wear glasses, mist, rain? Are there any issues around that? Um, I guess only that my glass, my sunglasses are polarized because it's better for you. So I can't, but I just got um, glasses that are seeing glasses that are transitional. So when I'm outside, they go, they're not polarized. So I purposely got unpolarized transitional glasses so I could look at my screen. I don't really have trouble with screen glare. Yeah. And what's nice is at night you can see your iPad. Whereas if you had paper, you'd have a flashlight to see your script. And I have polarized like complete, tr I don't have the transition chaining the sunglasses, but I have like the bifocals reading glasses for my glasses and sunglasses. And I have not had a problem with like glare and issues. It's just finding the right angle. It's the same thing with it, watching your, you know, monitors, if you're on the bigs or on a two headed right. monster, it's like finding the right angle to see it with the glass. Mary Lou Bella was asking about uh, scene Hi. number sizes. You know, it's an honor to have you here, Mary Lou. We're so Hi. happy you're with us. Said, can you, how do you make the scene numbers larger so they're easier to find when you're in edit mode when there's so many pages and you're trying to find a specific scene? Do you make your scene numbers bigger or are you just using the bookmark? Um, I never make them bigger. What you could, I think Spiller did this. I think he goes and he makes new slugs. So what you could do is go into your text bot, the little text tool, click on that, but in the inspector, give yourself a fill background. So whatever color you want to, maybe even at this point, if you're going to redo all your scene numbers, um, make it red and pick a background color that you like and make a text box and retype it and put it, slide it on and, and put it over your existing scene number. But I've never found that they weren't big enough. Yeah, I sometimes will draw with a color or something on the side if if there's something specific. Like if I have an action scene and I'm like, this is the first part is this. So I might write like 2A, 2B, and I'll just do it in a color on the side so I can see really quickly what part to make sure I'm not missing a shot before we move to the next beat of the action or something. Mm -hmm. um, all right, I know it's two o'clock. Uh, any other tips or last advice or... or um, Anything you want to share with folks before you depart and get ready to go shoot? <laughs> well, I think the one thing I want to say is, you know, I do tend to be a techie person, but only when tech makes sense. And honestly, the learning curve is not very high, hard, steep, whatever the, the, the one that the answer that makes sense to that question. Um, you know, I started using it on Scandal and then I think I went out of town for my next job. And I remember packing all my binders just in case I didn't feel comfortable with it. And it was a waste of luggage because, you know, once you use it, it's so easy and powerful and such a um, time saver that I don't think you're ever going to want to do, you know, use paper. And then we have these wildfires and climate change. It's so irresponsible. Each show uses like millions of pieces of paper and you often have sides and you throw them out like two seconds later. It's horribly wasteful. And now we're going to use PPE. You have, you guys, we just have a responsibility to offset the carbon footprint. So please, as like in return for my doing this, give me back the, the rejection of paper on set. I just think we got to do what we can. So um, yeah, that's my last parting words. Thank you, Valerie. We really appreciate your time and your expertise and just going step by step with us. It's much appreciated. We we all I know are sending you good wishes, health and safety as you Thank go back you. in the COVID world. I can't wait to hear how it goes and get some tips before I head back to set, but thank you so much. Thanks guys. I'm just gonna, I'll turn my video and everything off. I'm just gonna look through the chat real fast because I see some friends out here and then I'll, I'll, yes, I'll absolutely. jump off. All right, and bye. This stage, we mm -hmm. are going to say goodbye to Val. She will maybe answer some um, questions in the chat. I hope so, because I don't have answers for all of them, but Steve and the folks from Scriptation will. 